Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. But in either case, thank you very much for being here. I do genuinely appreciate it. For today's video, we have another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Explained. This is going to be a mini-series I run over the course of time, which will discuss hot topics, important things that you need to know about Yu-Gi-Oh!, particularly if you're a beginner player or someone who's maybe returning to the game. This will be a not-too-serious educational series that hopefully will give you a better understanding of how this all works. Now for today's video in particular, we're going to be discussing cost in Yu-Gi-Oh! and what exactly a cost is, how it works and all of that good stuff so that you're better prepared for when you go out there and go dueling. Now this is unlikely to be a top to toe assessment of the whole cost mechanic, but it should give you a really good idea of exactly how it works so that you're at least better prepared for when you go out and play. Now if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles, maybe even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should go ahead and check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store and if you use that exclusive link, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck into the video. So in Yu-Gi-Oh terms, when we refer to a cost, we are talking about an action that needs to be performed in order to activate a card or effect. Now we will get some examples shortly to showcase some instances of cost you may already be familiar with. Whilst we're here as well, there are actually a variety of types of cost too, and we'll cover the main ones in this video. Usually when people who are new or inexperienced at this game think of cost, they, generally speaking, just think about life points, which is indeed one way of paying a cost, but it's not the only way. There's actually plenty of others depending on what the card demands. Now, it's worth noting that it is important not to get cost and activation requirements mixed up, but that's probably a subject for a whole other video. As the name suggests, cost involves a player paying to activate a card or effect, but the payment requirements can vary from card to card. With any cards printed after problem solving card text, we can identify a cost on a card as it'll be separated from the remainder of the card text with a semicolon. If it's older, it may well be separated with the word to instead. Once the cost of a card is paid, the effect and card begins a chain, which again is probably a discussion for a whole other video. It should be mentioned at this stage that a cost is not activated, so the cost cannot be negated. And the cost is paid in full at the time of activation and not at the resolution. Since costs must be fully paid, you can't activate a card that you cannot pay the cost for. For example, if a card costs a thousand life points to activate, in the likes of Cosmic Cyclone, but we only have 900 life points, we cannot pay and therefore we cannot activate the card. On that note though, you can actually pay life points to death, so if you only have a thousand life points, you can pay exactly 1000 to activate a card, but you will lose the duel. Anyway, back to my point. Because a cost must be fully paid, if it cannot, it cannot activate. A good example of this is the likes of, say, Macrocosmos is on the field, which causes any cards that would go to the graveyard to be banished. If you wanted to activate a card that has a cost which requires you to send a card to the graveyard, then it can't be sent to the graveyard since it will get banished, and therefore you can't activate the card effect and pay the cost. Now back to that semicolon we were talking about before, so if you see any other text listed up to the point of semicolons then that is not necessarily part of the cost, but it must be completed at the time that the cost is paid. A good example of this would be the likes of Twin Twisters, which we'll break down for you now so it makes a little bit more sense. So the text on Twin Twisters reads, discard one card, then target up to two spells and traps on the field, destroy them. For the cost of the card we need to discard one card. But what about the targeting? Well, this too must be carried out at the time of activation. So if we break down what we do when we activate a Twin Twisters, does it go something like this? Twin Twisters is activated, placing it onto the field in one of the spell and trap zones. A card is discarded in order to allow this to happen. Then immediately, you need to select the cards that you would nominate for destruction. At this stage, any other cards that can be chained to the card are eligible to do so. The actual destruction of the nominated cards will happen at the end of the chain. The cost can't be negated, so even if the opponent negates our Twin Twisters, the action of discarding a card and then targeting the two spells and traps on the field will happen regardless. 
Now, if neither player intends to chain an effect to the card, the card's target will now be destroyed. If my opponent activates a card in response that doesn't prevent the effect from happening, then their card will resolve, then the targeted cards will be destroyed afterwards. So once again, we discard the card, this is the cost. We must target up to two spells and traps on the field, this is a requirement in order to activate the card, but it is not part of the cost. Then once the chain resolves, then the destruction part of the effect is the actual card effect of Twin Twisters. Now let me give you another example. For this we'll use Lumina Lightsworn Summoner. See the effect reads, once per turn you can discard one card, then target one level 4 or lower Lightsworn monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. Once per turn during your end phase, send the top 3 cards of your deck to the graveyard. Now again, we'll break this one down for you. We'll actually ignore the end phase effect since that's not relevant to what we're discussing here. So let's read the first part. So once per turn, this is separated by a colon, indicating that this is an activated effect and starts a chain. It's also an activation requirement. And what I mean by that is that if the effect has already been activated by this specific Lumina, then it can't be used again since it is a once per turn requirement to do so. You will then discard one card and target one level 4 or lower light sworn monster in your graveyard. The cost is to discard one card and the targeting of the level 4 or lower light sworn monster must be done at this time before any other cards can be activated in response. Then we would special summon the target. This is what will happen when and if the effect resolves. So if your opponent negates the effect, you would have discarded and targeted, but the monster would not be special summoned. Likewise, since we've targeted, if the monster is no longer in the graveyard for any reason, such as an opponent's effect banishing it, then the effect will not resolve. This won't be able to special summon the monster, but you will still have had to have paid the cost to attempt to do so. Now one of the other types of costs that you'll likely encounter is a maintenance cost, and these are for cards which the cost must be paid for the card to remain on the field and active. Typically you'll see these costs paid for in the standby or in the end phase. Now usually if these costs are not or cannot be paid then the card will almost always be destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Maintenance costs, much like the activation costs, can't be negated. They also do not activate or start a chain link. However, if the effect of such a card is negated, the cost still needs to continue to be paid. One example of a maintenance cost can be seen with Baguska, whose effect reads, Once per turn during your standby phase, detach one material from this card, if you cannot destroy it. There's also then a bunch of other effect text that we really don't give a shit about. Now as you can see, we have a cost to keep Baguska on the field, and that is to detach one material during your standby phase. That means that even if Baguska's effects are negated, it will still need to detach as normal, as this is a cost and cannot be negated. We can also look at some other mandatory costs, such as the likes of Imperial Order. The effect reads, negate all spell effects on their field. Once per turn during the standby phase, you must pay 700 life points. This is not optional, or this card is destroyed. The cost for Imperial Order is to pay 700 life points during each standby phase, which is not optional. I mean, it even says it on the card to make it clear, but you get the point. Now, hopefully this video has helped you to understand a little bit better how cards and cost works. The trick with all of this is to study up on how problem-solving card text works, and in truth, just reading your cards properly will make this all a little bit easier. Although this is something that Yu-Gi-Oh! players are notoriously well-known for struggling with, myself included. And that, comrades, is all for today's video. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Whichever one of those categories you fall into, thank you very much for coming along. Now, whilst I've got your attention, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, discussion content, vlogs, all of the good stuff that you could possibly want. And if there is something you'd like to see on the channel that you haven't seen so far, let me know down in the comments or go ahead and reach out to me on any kind of social media. Links are all in the description for those down below. But once again, thank you very much for coming along and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.